Hey everybody, this is uh, Dr. Zachary Ward at Life Alignment Chiropractic here in Auburn Hills, Michigan, looking at the phenomena of forward head posture. There's a lot that has been said about this. You can find thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos uh, covering forward head posture. Why well, add my voice to the mix? Because I have a unique perspective on this that may be helpful for you. Um, so we're going to answer the questions, what is forward head posture? Will exercise help me? Can a chiropractor help me? Uh, upper cross syndrome, is that the same thing as forward head posture? How do those two interact? And then we're going to look at the whole global picture. Uh, just briefly, we look at what may be going on with forward head posture uh, in the other plane other than looking at you from the side. Most people's understanding of forward head posture comes from images that look like this, where there's a uh, picture of somebody uh, looking at them from the side, so we see their ear, their shoulder, their hip, their ankle, if we're looking at the whole posture. Uh, and then we see uh, this phenomena where as they're standing up, even though they think they're standing upright, uh, their shoulder is like here, and we look uh, northward to where the position of the head is, and the head is going quite a bit forward. And if we focus in on the ear, we'll often see that that ear sits in front of the shoulder. And then if we draw a line down from there, we may see that that shoulder sits even further back of the hip. Uh, in some extreme cases, but in any case, uh, typically forward head posture refers to this forward position of the head relative to the shoulder. Uh, what this does is that places a lot of stress uh, on the spinal column. We could talk about adding, uh, you know, about 10 pounds per every inch that this uh, ear is forward of the shoulder. And uh, that pretty much sums up what forward head posture is. Uh, here's an image of this same patient. Uh, several weeks later, you should be able to see that relative to the shoulder, uh, the head is coming back over center. Here's another example of a patient with forward head posture. Again, we see the shoulder. This is not quite as developed as the other uh, gentleman who's quite a bit older. This, this gentleman is younger. Uh, here we kind of see more of the exacerbation of the roundness of the shoulder. Okay, And then we can see the effect on the other aspects of the posture, so the pelvis uh, the belly looks like it's going forward, even though it's not. Uh, for some people, there's going to be an anterior pelvic tilt. In other words, this kind of tilts down. Uh, in this case, we actually don't see much of that. Um, you can see how the head kind of comes back over the shoulder uh, in this case as well. So, can exercise help me? Yes. Can chiropractic help me? Yes. Uh, both of those two things can help. Uh, they often have to be combined in order to get a nice change. Most uh, therapists, whether it be PTs or massage therapists or chiropractors, uh, will blame the, you know, this presentation of the head going forward on something called upper cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome just means um, that if you were to draw an imaginary line looking at the human body uh, from front to back, kind of crossing through the area of the shoulder, which is not drawn in, um, there's going to be a, a, a region of weakness on the front, a region of weakness on the back. Uh, region of tightness in the musculature on the back and the region of tightness in the front. And so if we're to kind of fill in this concept is we're going to have uh, weak, deep cervical chain muscles here. Okay. And we're going to have weak, uh, deep thoracic musculature here. So the rhomboids and maybe the lats, uh, the muscles that move the upper body into extension are going to be weak. And then we're going to have tension which is increased tension in the upper uh, posterior muscles of the neck, so the traps, splenius cervicis, the posterior uh, muscles, the this occipital area, so below the skull. This is going to be nice and tied up and through here. And then subsequently the musculature in the front of the chest, pec major, minor, uh, some of the deeper um, and muscles here deep in the side, serratus anterior may also be tight. Uh, and so that is where this notion of where upper, upper cross comes from. From my perspective, in terms of how to correct or look at, is we have to look at the entire global picture, okay? And one of the things we need to look at is we need to look at neck alignment, right? So in this picture that we have right here with this general generalized person with uh, upper cross syndrome and forward head posture, this person has a decent cervical curve, okay? Um, and not everybody who's out there is walking around with some sort of cervical curve. Now we get up here, of course, there is a, uh, a softening of a curve there, but the lower neck is showing some sort of curve, and this is often how it's drawn. But not everybody actually has a cervical curve like that. And so we have to consider the possibility 
uh, like in this patient here, that there's actually a straining of the neck, a reversal of the cervical curve. And this is what has uh, led to or contributed to the forward head posture. In which case, just doing exercises alone is more likely than not going to solve the forward head posture. Um, so looking at this individual's uh, posture, what we're going to see in the upper image is the before and the after image. Uh, you, can, you can see the shoulder here. You can see the ear here. Um, what you're going to see with this is not relative to the shoulder, a ton of forward head posture uh, in the upright position. What you cannot see though is you cannot see uh, the pelvis down here. And so the, the upper body actually does go quite a bit forward. And there's more of a roundness of the shoulder here uh, leading to that kind of rounded shoulder position. In the post image, you can see that the shoulder uh, is sitting slightly forward relative to the ear. In other words, the ear has come back. These two images correspond to the images above. In other words, this is the before uh, x-ray from the side. This is the after x-ray from the side. Here we're drawing a line, much like we're drawing a line in here. We're drawing a line from uh, basically the middle of the top of the second cervical vertebrae down to the bottom of the uh, C7 in most cases. I believe in this case it's uh, actually the bottom of C6, and it is. Um, and that same line is drawn here. Here we can see that there's actually a 3 millimeter shift uh, in this area of the neck, uh, and this is with the initial release, the chiropractic release using the technique that I use uh, in the cervical spine, allowing that uh, neck to regain some mobility and allowing that head to just naturally fall back uh, without having to exercise our way into this position. So in other words, this gentleman hasn't done a bunch of deep neck flexors in order to strengthen this weakness um, uh, in this area here. He's simply had the neck unlocked. So from my perspective, this is why you have to look at the global body posture, okay? Uh, because the neck uh, isn't just simply responding to um, a weakness in the front and a tension, you know, in the chest and a, and a, and a tension up here and a weakness back here. Uh, the, the head and the neck are rebalancing themselves due to prior trauma. There may be a loss of cervical curve. There also may be leans and rotations in there in that chest. And so from the side, yeah, it may look like the head's going slightly forward. Okay. So from the side, let's, so from the side, the head may go slightly forward, but from the front, it's actually because there's a forward body rotation here in a, in a, um, let's say a shift of the lower uh, lower spine off to the off to the left side and that body trying to restore itself back to the vertical that also has to be dealt with so trying to exercise my way out of that without first dealing with this body rotation and releasing uh, the thoracic spine through the the soft tissue attachments and things like that in the, between the cervical spine and the, and the and the thoracic spine are something that, that have to be dealt with uh, so what is forward head posture movement of the head forward over the shoulder uh, has some consequences for health we do not get into. Can exercise help me? Yes, it will. Exercise is the primary method that is recommended to most people. Can a chiropractor help me? Yes, a great chiropractor who's using, uh, you know, techniques uh, that deal with rebalancing the spinal column uh, and not just restoring motion, but actually re uh, rebalancing the spinal column. Are, that's going to help you as well. Uh, and from my perspective, uh, forward head posture is a result of upper cross syndrome that will contribute to it, but it's more than that. It can be uh, trauma to the cervical spine, loss of curve. It can be rotation in the upper body, counter rotations in the lower body. Uh, the whole global picture needs to be addressed, not just the weakness here and the weakness here and the tension here and the tension here.